So the principle of what they say, uh, light, yes, there is a light in the dimension of the uh, transition matter, there is a light in the principal matter, but in that field the strength and the light is due to the friction of the two plasma of the light against this environment. So there is a lot of answers in the world of physics we can now scientifically explain because we understand the creation of principal matter and dark matter and at the same time we can understand the creation of the soul and what's the problem or what is the purpose of creation and how we have a soul. The soul is very simple, I've explained in the book which is to be published, the creation of universe, that the soul is like a ray of light we see from a star in the sky. Probably the star has died and been destroyed, has been absorbed as part of other pieces in the universe millions and millions of years ago. But this light still is in trouble to distribute, to participate in the structure of the universe to its balance. So the soul of the man does not need the body of the man to exist. So it's very simple to understand how and where we go with our souls and the structure of our souls. No, 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 I'm not God. It's just how we understand the process of creation. That is the difference. We understand and we go to the basics of the creation at any point in the universe. You don't need to be God because the fields are there and one way or another, if you give it the right environment and give it the right magnetic field and gravitational field uh, appropriate for a certain type of fields to exist, you will have matter in the universe according to your own magnetic gravitational field. Why do we see light at this frequency? It's not because the light appears at this frequency. It appears because our amino acid magnetic gravitational field allows us to see the light at this frequency. So if we had, for example, in the of nitrogen, prot uh, let's say potassium in our chain of blood, in our molecule, I mean acid, we would see a different light in different strength and different magnet, uh, uh, spectrum of the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. So it's condition based. So once you understand this, you don't need to because you are part. You understand the whole process of the creation. To people look, this is strange because we've been brought up over centuries um, the way uh, mysticism started. It's very simple. It's exactly like uh, why. When we say we can travel with much faster speed than the speed of pleasant aircrafts or propulsion, people look at us with a strange way, a very simple way. It's a mindset. Our ancestors came out of the sea or whatever. The only thing they could see was the birds. They were going faster. They thought that if they could fly like a bird, they can go faster with less time. So for centuries, we worked to make a bird. The people made a wing, they jumped, they did everything. Till we managed to put a motor on it. So, in fact, our planes are a replication of uh, birds flying, but with motors on them. Now we put a jet on them. And then it came to the propulsion. The propulsion system is nothing new. Americans tried to glorify it. 700 years ago, 800 years ago, Chinese made the first rockets out of their firework. All they've done, they've made a bigger tank. If we didn't have the Chinese and even they have the birds to look and we are a human being, we got the intelligence, we see things moving, we want to understand what do we see moves. We see the moon moves, we see the sun moves, we see other things in the universe move. And if you understand their structure, how they move in the universe, then you come to the same conclusion as I have. All you need, you have to make yourself the bird, make a copy of the earth, that's what we've done. And that's why our system looks strange. So we had copied the way Earth works in our system because we have full data of what, uh, what the inner structure of the Earth is. And that's why it looks we do a strange thing. So if we didn't have the birds and we didn't have the Chinese and we have the amount of intelligence we have, we would have come to the same conclusion as I have centuries and thousands of years ago. A lot of things goes as I explained. Man did not discover gravity and magnetic field at the same time. If we would have discovered the two together and we understand it's the simplicity of the same, as I said, magnet north and south, we call it gravity. Gravity means gravitation getting pulled. And north and south pulls. 
the same thing so north north and north replay uh, what they call it ripples so if you would have understood the two together we most probably would have been a totally different race would have been much most probably the other side of the universe by now into other universes but we need the time and the, the thing is even this time is not time for man to understand this technology because the man is still kills for his own ego when the man learns he can live at peace then the time will come when the man is time to mature enough to go to the next step and this is what I said in one of my books it's one, it's one of the books that's written is that in time if man goes with this attitude of war and killing into space and comes across the other creatures which have much more advanced knowledge of the creation huh, they were not allowed to be carried on with this technology with this, this killing and destruction they will be taught a lesson that they will never forget and they will forget about what they have been brought up to kill to survive and uh, what do you feel the near future will bring us? within the next 10 to 15 years we will cross the solar cell solar system within the next 3 to 5 years most probably we brought our technology so advanced crossing galaxies within the next 10 years will be a very high possibility because now once you open the Pandora box everything else has been seen very easy to be done and then the universe is the same dimension it's, it's very interesting when you say what I see of the future there is a, a, a very stupid concept in uh, astronomy they say Venus is the only planet in solar system which goes clockwise yeah? and this comes from ignorance of the man the way they used to think that earth is the center of the universe they say at the moment cosmologists and astronomers say is that the Venus has been hit in its life by a meteorite that has caused the reverse of its rotation this is nothing but the rubbish because why? we understand the concept of the rotation and magnetic field and gravitational field we created, we developed a, technology, a system to, to prove the concept and it's very easy in our system our reactor magnetic field goes exactly like Earth, anti-clockwise if we change one of the fields of strength or change the position in respect to other fields slightly the reactor starts vibrating and then it starts going clockwise so no meteorite has ever hit the Venus the only thing is in Venus there are two possibilities in this inner core the magnetic fields are positioned slightly different or one of them is moving much faster than the other one and that's why it's going the other way the other possibility is as is in the book which I explained about the creation of solar systems all the planets are moving in sequence it means as the big giant planets we see as gas planets at the end they become closer to the Sun because the gravitational field of the Sun is pulling them in as you come to a certain position then our rotation will change in respect because the, earth is, the Sun has got a much stronger gravitational field and a higher rotation then Earth as Venus moves in closer to be absorbed by the Sun Earth moves to take the position of Venus we start going clockwise and we can show it physically so the mystery of Venus being hit by a meteorite is nonsense it's the same with the rotation of uh, Uranus Uranus is the only planet which works on its vertical axis and all its moons go on, uh, around its vertical axis where our Earth we go on the uh, other axis yeah? we have a system and we show exactly how if you change one more parameter the system to find the stability moves sideways so what hit Venus, uh, Uranus there was no other meteorite and these are huge gaseous planets even in the book with a paper which is getting published in the book which is coming out the creation of solar system we explain exactly how the ring of Saturns are created the reason because we have a system we can show it how it's done and how all the gaseous planets have rings because it's part of characteristics of their creation that they have the rings and part of this has already been explained in the second book which is the structure of the light so in so many ways uh, as our knowledge about the reality of positioning and magnetic field interaction in the universe increases then a lot of things which our forefathers made up to convince themselves 
as they say the magnetic field of the earth is because of the solid core in the middle and the convection theory that the electrons are freed and then they interact with the rotation of the center uh, solid core and it creates the magnetic field of the earth uh, it's been proven to be totally rubbish because now we know the solid core is not solid core there is got another core inside it and now we have two magnetic fields and we understand how gravity is and our system is a copy of it if you read my books i explain this fully in it so these are because at that time in the 19th 20th century they understood the concept of dynamo so they thought the earth is like a dynamo but in fact in nuclear plasma physics as a nuclear physicist we know plasma which is itself magnetic fields in motion creates its own current and the current is the rate of movement of magnetic fields how much they move so that leads to creation of magnetic field itself so in a way magnetic fields their motion creates its own magnetic field which feeds the universe so you don't need that much material the concept that the center of this earth is a solid matter is totally meaningless because it's plasma is certain other plasma and its motion creates a second magnetic field inside the solid core and what we knew is created on the other side is still a plasma the two fields interact and goes back again to what we said the two sides which interact they create the gravity and the two sides which are similar they repel they create the magnetic field of the earth so in a way once you understand this crossing uh, galaxies and universes will be a matter of next 10 15 20 years and no more the reason to explore and if we have everything is that we are human race we always wanted to know what's next door. When they found America, we all went there to see how America is. And we, that's why we started from one position in the universe uh, on Earth and we moved further and further and further to find a better land next door. It's part of our nature to expand and find out what the universe carries. But on the other hand, as I always say in all my talks, what we have discovered and what we have we are developing is a knowledge like a house with a thousand steps to get to the top with everything which we've done in past 30 40 years with everything which we were developing so rapidly in past five years we haven't even gotten to step one yet we're getting ready to get up to before even we walk yet that's alone putting in the first step on the on the first step of the ladder of thousand steps so there is a lot more it's just that putting the foundation the right way the correct way and the way that brings peace to man with this technology there can't be any more war because i have as much knowledge as you have and at the same time i can dissolve you that you become nothing and i always said in my letter to united nations and u.s also just have said very clearly The man will come to accept this technology not out of love, but out of the fear of his own existence. We won't love this technology, but we will. We'll take it because I know what they'll do with us. Okay. Uh, oh, <laughs> what was my question again? Uh, and what will do with us? There'll be none of us left. There'll be no man left. Why? Because we can literally bring back ourselves to the point of numbness, nothingness. There's never been a Big Bang. If you understand the process of the creation, uh, this theory of the stupidity of whoever came up with the Big Bang theory, when a proton divides into electron and proton, there is no Big Bang. It's just a whoosh, and the plasma splits. Huh? whoever has been coming up with this creation of huge big bang and then they created and there's a stupid logic of uh, when the universe cooled down the gravity got hold and atoms were created this is a total nonsense this is the guys who don't understand nothing about physics in physics well now we understand the structure of plasma when the plasma slows down it comes to a matter level it becomes tangible to us so there was never a big bang and there was never cooling and the actual the universe is they said the universe expanding the new expanding because the principal matter is in the center and as it is unwinding it's growing itself 
And the reality is that what we call the unicos, the universal cosmos, is that if there wasn't a room for this universe to expand into, this universe will not expand it. So, there is another part to this universe which is beyond our knowledge of what we can see. So, this universe is expanding into an environment that that environment allows it to expand into. And when that environment does not allow the expansion anymore, or takes it more than it needs, this universe, it leaks like exactly the solar system. The rays goes out, this universe will divide and become two other universes. And there will never be a Big Bang, it's always like, it, we see it exactly like a division of neutron. Into splitting, and it's just a whoosh, and it starts from the center, and you see the structure. So, 